This is an Arduino. It's basically a mini computer, and I want to make a talk. If I'm able to succeed, it could have all sorts of applications. TTS for simple Arduino games like Pong, audio for other Arduino-based projects. But the more I played around with this, the more I wonder, is this something that's even possible? And if so, what would it sound like? Join me today as I show you how you can make your own Arduino talk using just a few components linked in the description. But the first step in this journey is to figure out how humans hear sound. One of the main mechanisms for this is a thin tube called the cloclet. It's actually a long strip of rolled up material that tapers off in thickness. When a sound first comes to your ear, the malleus, incus, and stapes, which by the way are the three smallest bones in your body, act like a hammer to convert sound's pressure waves into a vibration along the cloclea. Now different parts of the cochlea will react differently. The thick part is good at capturing slow vibrations and the thin part is good at the fast vibrations. So when I tap this really low note on the piano, the string on the inside vibrates at a certain frequency. That makes the air vibrate at the same frequency. Then it goes into your ear where those tiny bones make your cochlea vibrate and the part of your cochlea that reacts, which will be different for different sounds, sends a signal to your brain. Aha, you say, that's a really low note. I can play a higher note, and now a different part of your cochlea reacts, and you say, aha, that's a really high note. Okay, why is all that relevant to making an Arduino talk? Well, this is an active piezo buzzer. Inside is a material that physically reacts to the current. Send a bunch of current through it, bang, on the inside it bends up. Take away the current, boom, on the inside it flattens. Okay, now send some current, stop sending some current, send some current, stop sending 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 current, and now it's vibrating at 440 hertz, and that makes the air vibrate at 440 hertz, and in your ear you hear that 440 hertz A. We can do that on the Arduino. Plug one side of the buzzer to ground, plug the other to pin three, then in the program we tell pin three be high for one over 440 hertz, or 2273 microseconds, then tell it to be low for another 2,273 microseconds, and then there was light. Wait, no, there was sound. But you'll actually notice we have the wrong note. This is 880 hertz, not 440. And that's because 2,273 microseconds should be the total cycle time. So we have to divide each half cycle time by two. And now we have our 440 hertz. All right, remember our Arduino sounds. But for now, let's talk about how modern devices store sound. If you've played around with voice memos before, you might have seen that it stores sounds at 48,000 hertz. That means every one over 48,000 hertz, or every 21 microseconds, it has a value to represent the sound. Based on what we've learned so far, you should be able to guess what that value means. Yep, that's right, it's pressure. And luckily for us, in this little piezo buzzer, Pressure is almost directly related to the position of the buzzer. More bend equals more pressure. Less bend equals less pressure. And remember what we said, more current equals more bend. So more current equals more bend equals more pressure. Less current equals less bend equals less pressure. So your computer can directly control pressure or create sound just by controlling current. Okay, but wait, at each of those 21 microseconds, a modern speaker is capable of taking 65,536 different values. Sometimes that can even go up to 16,777,216 different values. That's called bit depth. But our Arduino can only put two, high or low, no in between. So what do we do? You might think to just round each of those 65,536 numbers to the nearest value. For example, if we want to compress to just 16 values, the first 4,096 go to zero, from 4,096 to 8,192 go to one, etc. All right, sounds like a great idea to me. Let's listen to what it sounds like. Here is rounded to just 16 values. This is an example of audio rounded to take just 16 values. To 8. This is an example of audio rounded to take just 8 values. Just 4 now. This is an example of audio rounded to take just 4 values. And now our Arduino's 2. This is an example of audio rounded to take just 2 values. Hmm. Doesn't sound very good. So, simple rounding is not the solution. What can we do then? Keep that question in mind. And in the meantime, let's talk about another limitation of the Arduino. And that is memory. Our Arduino can only store 32,000 bytes or 256,000 bits of data. Now, that sounds like a lot, but even if we're just storing one bit for each of those 48,000 samples a second from voice memos, we only get five seconds of audio. Five. What's that? You have an idea? Just don't take 48,000 samples? Maybe only 24,000? Hmm, creative. Let's hear what that sounds like. This is an example of audio sampled at 24,000 hertz. Not bad. What about 12,000? This is an example of audio sampled at 12,000 hertz. Still pretty good. 6,000? This is an example of audio sampled at 6,000 hertz. Not great, but bearable. 
3,000. This is an example of audio sample at 3,000 hertz. Mm, starting to break up a bit here. So if we just sample down to 6,000, we can have over 40 seconds of audio. Pretty good. Now, while you were thinking about the memory of the Arduino, I did a bit of research into how to solve our bit depth problem. You know, taking those 65,000 values and compressing it down to two. There's this audio coding scheme used by NASA called Delta Modulation. How it works is every sample you just say higher or lower than the previous value. And you can get a shape pretty close to the actual sound with just two values. Only problem is our Arduino doesn't think higher or lower, it only thinks high or low. So there's a variation on Delta Modulation called Delta Sigma modulation. It matches the running sum of the lowered bit depth signal, so the ones and the zeros, with the running sum of our audio. And it's pretty easy to implement. Only took me 11 lines of code here. Alright, let's listen again. Here's Delta Sigma modulation compressing 65,000 values to 16 values. This is an example of DSM compressing to 16 values. Now to 8. This is an example of DSM compressing to 8 values. To 4. This is an example of DSM compressing to 4 values. And to two. This is an example of DSM compressing to two values. It does a pretty good job. In real life, in order to make this sound exactly like the original, they would upsample. So instead of 48,000 zeros and ones a second, they would go to something like 480,000 zeros and ones a second. Listen now. This is an example of audio upsampled to 480,000 hertz. Sounds a bit closer to the original, right? But for the sake of memory, we're gonna have to go the opposite way. And that's going down to 12,000. This is an example of audio sampled at 12,000 hertz. And finally, 6,000. This is an example of audio sampled at 6,000 hertz. At this point, it's starting to sound a bit off. How do we make it sound better? Keep that question in mind. But for now, let's try putting the audio on our Arduino. Hmm, doesn't sound like how it was before. Here's the one from our computer again. We can barely tell what it's saying, but it's still intelligible. But on our Arduino, I have no idea. It's time for a little upgrade to our speaker. Our piezo buzzer is great for playing simple sounds, like basic tones. But because of its physical properties, it doesn't have the control we need to play voices. Instead, we'll replace it with a magnetic buzzer, which looks almost the same. On the inside of these little things, is literally just a coil of wire wrapped around a magnet. I won't get into the specifics, but just like the piezo buzzer, current is directly related to the pressure. So all we have to do is replace our buzzers and... Hmm. It's still garbage. Let's take a look at the oscilloscope. What's that? You see a problem? It's not a perfect square wave? Interesting observation. You're completely right. Because of that coil of wire, the buzzer is a bit inductive. But to save you some time, that's not the real problem. I actually did quite a few experiments to find the resistance of the Arduino pins and inductance of the buzzer, but it turns out that this little blip would have done very little to affect the sound. So, any other ideas for what the problem might be? Ah, very good guess. We've been saying this whole time that the buzzers are controlled by current, but what we're actually feeding the buzzer is a controlled voltage. What effect does this have? Take a look at the simulation. This, by the way, is LT Spice. It's a free software you can get to simulate all sorts of circuits. It's a little hard to learn at first because everything is done with keyboard shortcuts. There's pretty much no buttons in their software for some reason. But once you learn it, it's super useful, so I highly recommend. Anyways, if I measure the voltage, we see something similar to our oscilloscope. But the current doesn't look similar at all. Well, let's add a little current mirror to our circuit. This is a simple circuit with just a few resistors and transistors that lets us control the current with a voltage. If I simulate this with LT Spice, now we get a nice clean current. So let's try adding this to our circuit. Hmm. Still sounds not great. Actually, I was trying this off camera and with the perfect setup, you can get it to resonate nicely and it sounds great, but it's extremely difficult. So turns out all this time, the problem was something out of our control. That's unfortunate, and it happens sometimes. We took the scenic route, but hey, we learned a lot and it was fun anyways. Okay, now back on track to our main project. Using a proper speaker now, if you have any old computers, you might be able to dig one out from there. But in my case, I just got these 3 ball 8 ohm speakers for a pretty good price off Amazon. We can then connect Arduino pin 3 to the gate of the transistor, have a separate power supply to the connector. These Apple 5 volt charging bricks, you probably have them lying around in your house, are a great choice. We can also connect the emitter of the transistor to ground. We can then add a potentiometer between the Arduino pin and the gate for some basic volume control. All right, let's listen. Pretty good, eh? All right, now time for some final touches. 
Our setup certainly works, but it could definitely sound better. The first thing we'll change is in our delta sigma modulator. We can tune this multiplication factor up, and that pushes noises to higher frequencies. Let's take a look at what it sounds like with a factor of 1, or our original. Now with a factor of 3. The noise goes away as we push into higher factors, but you'll see that it also affects the phase, so we can't go too high or our sounds get blended together. Since the noise gets pushed into higher frequencies, we can remove those higher frequencies with a simple low pass filter. Here's a comparison before and after. And we can also add a low pass filter in the physical circuit to make it sound a bit more smooth. The only thing you'll notice is that there's a very prominent tone playing along with our soundtrack. I did try removing this with a band stop filter, but to no avail. I think the reason was because I needed a whole bunch of 2.2 microfarad capacitors for the filter, and somehow a 22 microfarad capacitor found its way in there without me noticing. But I would be interested to see if one of you could figure this out. So here we have our final project. We can even add a little screen to give it some light. But before I leave you with some b-roll, I want to give you a bit of a disclaimer for those of you who are following along yourself. If you went to my GitHub, you'll have seen that there's this huge swath of code that I just completely ignored in this video. That's a Huffman encoder, and it means we can now compress our audio to just 60% the size, which means we can have over a minute of audio. Otherwise, this video along with the GitHub should give you a pretty good idea on how to tackle this project yourself. So have fun, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching!